So I have this blog uh, where for years I have been reviewing every book that I read. And about five years ago or so, I, I started, uh, in addition to just reviewing the book when I had finished it, uh, keeping track on the weblog of when I started a book, when I finished it, because, you know, sometimes it could be a, a week or so between when I finish a book and when I write the written review, or longer in some cases. Uh, and also keeping track of books I did not finish, books I started but then abandoned. And, uh, I don't know, about a year ago or so, uh, I started incorporating that into this YouTube channel. So when I make a blog post about a book that I'm starting or a book that I'm abandoning, abandoning, uh, I also make a YouTube video to supplement that. Uh, and this is one of those videos, which is perhaps a long way of saying that uh, I, I'm not sure this entirely makes sense without the context of my blog. Apologies uh, in advance for that. But on, on the weblog for the past three years, I have listed Aesop's Fables uh, under my currently reading list, and I've decided that it's time to take Aesop's Fables down from my books that I claim to be currently reading. So uh, I don't actually have a copy of Aesop's Fables, but uh, three years ago, I, well, sorry, let me back up. Uh, if you've been watching this channel, uh, you know that I've got sort of two main modes. Uh, one, one is uh, reviewing stuff, uh, participating in BookTube. Uh, and the other is uh, making content for English language learners. And along the second mode, uh, I had made uh, videos that were intended to be listened to by people learning English retelling the Brothers Grimm stories and retelling Aesop's fables. And my original intent was to just work through all of them in order. Uh, you know, the, there are 210 uh, canonical Brothers Grimm stories in their seventh edition. Uh, and there are, I don't know, 586 Aesop's fables. I, I started doing the Brothers Grimm first, uh, but the Brothers Grimm uh, stories are varying in length. Some of them are very short, but some of them can be quite long, uh, to the point where some of them I needed to break these down into two different videos, like uh, this, the story of the youth who went forth to learn about fear I, I found too long to do in one video. Um, Aesop's fables are reliably short, so I uh, decided to intercut uh, the Brothers Grimm stories that I was doing with uh, Aesop's Fables videos. I, at the time I was making this, f these uh, for a group of students I was actually teaching at the time. So I had the weekly deadline to produce the video um, every week to give them as homework. A, a self-imposed deadline, but I, I wanted to keep I, I wanted to keep the, the homework regular and they, they had grown to uh, expect it, my students. So uh, I would do Brothers Grimm one week, Aesop's Fables the next week. And, and then I, I tried to do uh, Aesop's Fables every two weeks, just because Aesop's Fables were shorter. Now, the, the Brothers Grimm, I had long wanted to read uh, anyways, just to, you know, for my own literary benefit, just to say I've read the complete Brothers Grimm. Um, and Aesop's Fables... Uh, I also decided it would be kind of neat to work through from cover to cover, so to speak, uh, from the first story to the last story. Um, and then for various reasons, I stopped making those videos. There, there are a plethora of reasons. The biggest reason uh, is that I changed departments. I, I went from being a regular teacher to being a teacher trainer at the time. Um, and... Uh, no, no longer had a class uh, to make those videos for each week, which took a, away a lot of the impetus to them. I, I thought it would be interesting to make them just for my own benefit, or just to, you know, create an archive of lessons, which I thought would be kind of neat to point to and say, I did this. Um, but it, it's hard to motivate yourself uh, to, to create this stuff if, if there's no students expecting it. Uh, the videos weren't particularly getting a lot of views, um, 
well, you know, you, YouTube's funny some, some like that, isn't it? Uh, what gets views and what doesn't. But in, in the case of both the Brothers Grimm and Aesop's Fables, uh, I was not the first person to have this idea. There are tons of, tons of audio recording of all of Aesop's Fables online on YouTube already. Uh, some aimed at English language learners, some just uh, aimed at the general listener. Uh, same, same with, um, sorry, what did I say? Uh, for, for both Aesop's Fables and the Brothers Grimm. So it, it was not like I was fulfilling a niche that needed to be filled. And also around that time, uh, around that time I was switching departments anyways, that announcement that YouTube was cracking down on channels that did children's content came in. Now, I did not view these videos I was making uh, as children's content. I, I was thinking that they could be useful for adult ESL learners to listen to a story and get some useful vocab out of it, to, et cetera. But uh, that didn't mean that YouTube would view it the same way. And, it, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know, Aesop's Fables, are they children's stories? I mean, I, I guess you could make the argument that they're timeless stories, and especially the lesser known ones uh, are not necessarily children's stories. But the well-known ones are commonly thought of as children's stories, right? Like the tortoise and the hare. That's, that, that's a children's story, essentially. Uh, the Boy Who Cried Wolf, uh, etc. You know, all, all the more well-known ones are certainly associated with being children's stories. Um, I could, yeah, I, I, like a lot of people, I was confused about that directive. I, uh, there was, you, I was unsure about whether I should label them as children's stories. I, I don't want this channel to be labeled as a children's channel. I very much want a seat at the adult table, uh, especially for all the heavier themes I get into. Um, there are there are some videos that I've, I've had to go back and label as for children, for example, when I was reading out storybooks. Um, and uh, apparently the, the new directive, new at the time, uh, was that uh, some if you have too many videos on your channel that were labeled for children, then the whole channel gets classified for children. I don't know exactly what the magic number was or what the magic ratio was, but uh, it, it was something I was a little bit nervous about, which also took away some of the motivation for creating those videos. Now, I, I don't want to say that I'll never go back and retake up that project, but for the moment, uh, I'm done making uh, Brothers Grimm uh, ESL videos, and I'm done making Aesop's ESL videos. Now, the Brothers Grimm, I wanted to read cover to cover anyways, so I... Uh, the, the book sat idle on my shelf for a couple of years, but I picked it up the past couple months. I've read it cover to cover and reviewed it, and in fact, that was the previous video I posted, uh, was about the Brothers Grimm. Um, Aesop's Fables, though, Aesop's Fables, I'm beginning to think um, it was not smart of me to classify that as a book to be read. Um, now, what, what I was going off when I was making these videos what is what is, uh, I got from Wikipedia, which is the Perry Index. Apparently some scholar named Perry years ago uh, put numbers on each fable based on how old he judged them to be. So one was the oldest, and then it goes all the way down through like 580 something or something like that. Uh, and th there are, of course, books of Aesop's fables. Uh, you know, I read them from the library when I was a child. I I'm sure you did as well. But but the idea of being a completist on this and doing the complete Aesop's fables. Well, um, yeah. It didn't really seem like there was much of a point. I did, actually, when I was making the first video, uh, I tried to introduce to my students who Aesop was and did a brief biography of Aesop, in which I researched it, you know, on Wikipedia and a few other sites. And, and I learned something, which I didn't know before, is, is that Aesop very likely never existed. He, he's a mythological figure. Which is one of those things that, you know, once you hear it, you're like, of course, 
of, of course he was. Um, but uh, up, up until that moment, I, I had gone my whole life uh, without realizing that he was uh, not a historical figure. I, when, I, when I was a kid, I remember seeing a Disney cartoon about Aesop's fables. It was, it was for the wonderful world of Disney. Uh, I think it was one of their older episodes, but uh, they used to rerun their old episodes on the Disney Channel uh, in the 80s when I was growing up. Uh, and um, <clears throat> they, they they had a little... One, one of the episodes was an informational thing about Aesop, uh, which I think was a, a frame story into which they inserted cartoons uh, that they had made about his various fables. But they, they told the story of Aesop as if he was a real person. And they had uh, the um, authoritative narrator voice uh, narrating his life with, with these little stop-motion cartoons. Uh, and I, I had just never thought to question it ever since then. I, I just always thought he was a real person. But uh, you, you look him up on Wikipedia, and he is almost certainly not a real person. And even if he was... Uh, most of the stories that we call Aesop's fables, uh, he couldn't possibly have written because they come from all different time periods. So it's it's just it's 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 like Mother Goose. Uh, it's it's a convenient name to ascribe all these fables to. Now the the brothers Grimm's, of course, were real people, uh, and uh, for all its faults, this book. There is at least a uh, authorial intent behind it, a somewhat of a, a unity of theme or purpose, which makes it possible to talk about this as a work of literature. Um, but Aesop's Fables, just being a name for all the little fables from antiquity, um, yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense to talk about that as a book, even though I had intents to go through it in order from Perry index number one to Perry index number 500 and something. Uh, that plus, if, if you look at those uh, original stories as they're in the public domain or whatever on Wikipedia, the, the original stories don't really have a lot of literary value. They're like one paragraph long uh, and they're, they're just only a few sentences. Uh, what we think of often when we think of these stories, for example, the tortoise and the hare, or any of them really, uh, is, is we're, we're thinking of the retelling of these stories, where different authors over time have retold, selected Aesop's fables, and added in more detail and added in more literary flourish. Um, I, I'm, I don't think anyone has ever done the complete Aesop's fables, at least not as a as, uh, literature um you know you, you can probably find it in the archive of a university somewhere um but you know in, in terms of rewriting them as literature i'm not sure that exists out there but the point being you know i've, I've got a bit of a completist personality I, I like to read the complete unabridged version so you know this is the complete unabridged brothers Grimm, all 210 stories um but the, there's, there's no point in doing that with Aesop's fables, um, because even though each, each collection of Aesop's fables that you pick up is uh, just a selection, uh, the author has added their own spin to those stories. So um, what, what I'm trying to say is I've, I've realized over time that there's no value in going through the stories in strict order and counting them as Aesop's fables read, because th there's very little literary value in these fables uh it's much better just to pick up a collection and and i may do that in the future uh if if i ever run across it in a bookstore or something pick up a, a collection of fables and talk about that but a, as a project to work my way through all the fables uh, i think i'm going to abandon that i i of course reserve my right to change my mind in the future maybe even change my mind about making those ESL videos uh, or change my mind about stopping making those ESL videos. But for the moment, I am taking Aesop's Fables down off my list of currently reading books. No, I no longer consider myself to be currently reading that. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, Aesop's Fables 
as uh, a reading project from Fable 1 to Fable Last. I, I'm putting the brakes on that one.